Good morning, whoever you are, wherever you find yourself on life's journey, however it is you're joining in this time of worship, you are welcome to be part of it today. We are today marking the passing of Judy Stevens, a longtime member of St. Thomas. She was a regular attender, a faithful friend, interested in learning more about the Lord. We thank the Lord for his care of Judy and pray now comfort for those mourning her departure. We gather, to worship, to, we gather in worship to focus on the Lord. We can get distracted by all that's going on around us. It's easy to do. And so we need these regular occasions to confirm that God is at the center of our lives. That we are counting on the Lord to give what we need as we move through these days. A little bit later in the service, we'll be coming to the Lord's table where we see God's generosity on display. For now, I encourage you to pause, to take a breath, to be here, and prepare your heart for worship. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the day that you have made, for what you give us in moving through these days. We thank you for the care that you show, that you're aware of what's going on in us and around us. And as we come together today, loving God, open our hearts and minds to receive what you have for us, that we might move ever closer to you. We commit this time of worship to you now through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 95. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let, let us kneel before, before the Lord, Lord our, our Maker. Maker. For he is our God. And, and we are his people, the flock, flock under, under his, his care. care. Thank you. 
blessed when our faith can hold thee fast. It's a good phrase to describe what happens when we come to the Lord in prayer, as we do each week in part of our worship. So I invite you to join me and join your voice to mine as we pray together now, with and for one another. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, you are good, and what you do is good, and we praise your holy name. We thank you that we can come before you in prayer, that we can trust that you hear us, that we know that that's true. And so we bring before you these matters that concern us. We pray for government leaders, God, that they might seek you, that they might pursue what honors you in terms of making peace and working for justice. We pray for your church. We know that your church is scattered around this world many people in different places, and we pray, God, that these would keep looking to you for strength and guidance, that they might shine, that they might bring flavor to this world, that they would be a blessing wherever they go. And we pray for this church, that you would continue to direct our steps. God, that you would help us as we, like so many, are together in different places where it's difficult to spend the kind of time together that we like. God, help us to keep trusting you for our needs, for the building of our community, for giving us good ideas of ways that we can be of service to those around us. Lord, we pray for the people that are part of our networks, family members and friends, people at school, where we work, in our neighborhoods, We pray, God, for those with needs that we know about, that they would be looking to you, that you would be working through us and others of your people to bring help. God, that you would be at work healing and strengthening, granting patience. Lord, we remember those of our number who for different reasons are calling out to you for Cheryl, for Shirley, for Elsie, for Ron, for Bert and for Nancy, for Rick and Ron and Robert. We pray for Joan and for Ray, for Bonnie, for Jim and for Tracy. We pray for the family of Judy Stevens and continue to commit them to your care. We pray for Brandon and Ben as they serve serve overseas. And we pray for ourselves that we would be attentive to your spirit, that we would be open to your leading, that we would be pursuing you and more and more wanting what you want, oh God. Continue to be at work in us and through us, we pray. Through Christ the Lord, amen. As we consider God's faithful and generous provision, one way of expressing our thanks is through the giving of offerings offerings that come to St. Thomas as well as to other people and agencies that continue to do the Lord's work. And so as we're preparing offerings, may it be with joyful hearts. May we keep trusting the Lord to provide and to give us grace to be generous and full of joy. Let's pray for these gifts. Loving God, thank you for the rich blessings that you pour into our lives. And as we offer these finances now, God, may they be used for your glory, for the continuing and extending of your work here at St. Thomas and in this community and throughout the wider world. We thank you for these gifts and commit them to you through Christ. Amen.
Our scripture this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're glad to have Brian Hench reading for us. Good morning. Our reading this morning comes from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one of the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. And this is the word of God for the people of God. And Lord, we're so grateful for the gift of your word. I pray that you would be teaching us through it by your Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the ways that we can define or describe church is as a group of people who gather under the banner, Jesus is Lord people who gather together under this banner to build up one another, to bear witness to God's grace in generous and creative ways throughout the communities they're part of and into the wider world, and then to bring glory to God. Today, we're going to look at some of the teaching from the Apostle Paul on one aspect of church life. We're going to look at the gifts that God gives for carrying out the work that God sets. That God is a giver is a well-established truth. The scriptures make that point on many occasions in various ways. Last week, we looked at Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. The shepherd who provides and protects, who accompanies, who gives. A verse that many of us learned as kids, John 3.16 emphasizes this point. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And then we have among a number of passages, this one that Brian read for us, out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which describes a series of gifts that come from God. You hear them in verse, verses 8, 9, and 10. Gifts like wisdom and knowledge and faith and healing and miracles, speaking in tongues, gifts that God gives to carry out the work that God assigns. We find lists of these gifts in different kinds of places. There's another one over in Romans, chapter 12, another letter of the Apostle Paul. And he'll speak here about gifts like these teaching and faith and serving, encouraging and giving and leading, showing mercy. Elsewhere in the scriptures, we hear about being able to work with your hands in a particular way as a gift from God. Paul will give us another list in the book of Ephesians. And as we'll see a little bit later, Peter adds his voice to these in his first epistle. As we hear these lists of gifts, we understand that they are abilities and inclinations, that they provide perspective. And we understand, too, all the variety that these lists describe. Variety in the gifts, but a harmony in how they get used and what they accomplished. Paul will draw a picture of a body 
and say, just as a body has different parts to it, hands and fingers and ankles and knees, we want a body to have these different parts, but they, we want them to work well and together in concert. And we know what happens when that doesn't occur or when parts of the body are hurt or missing. Who gets these gifts? Well, let's look at 1 Corinthians 12 and listen to what the apostle says here. Verse 4 of chapter 12 speaks about these gifts and the Spirit distributing them. And then in verse 6, there are different kinds of these gifts, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. And then verse 7, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Everyone, each one who gets the gifts, all of God's people get gifts, the text tells us. Now, if you've been around groups of people before, and sometimes even this circulates around churches, folks talk about the 80-20 rule, how 20% of the people do 80% of the work. Sometimes that happens. But that is not the picture that Paul paints for us when it comes to using the gifts that God gives. It's not like, God, like Paul is saying here, 20% of the church will get gifts. Or maybe 30% of the church will get gifts. Or if it's a really great church, 40%. Paul's saying it's everyone. It's each one receiving gifts from God. How do you know what yours are? How do you know what gifts God has given you? Well, it's possible that as, reading th as I was reading this, these lists, you heard something on there that just sounds like, oh, that's me. I encourage, I show mercy, I give, I lead, I teach. Another way that sometimes people identify their gifts is they look around and they see what is not happening. Why aren't they, how come there's no... And very often, the things that we see missing are the things that God is calling us into. So that's one of the markers, or that can be one of the markers to discern what our gifts might be. What do we enjoy doing? What do we make room for in our lives? What, when it's announced as having, being in need, do we find ourselves saying, yeah, sign me up? I'd be happy to do that. And as we do it, we sense a real fulfillment. Again, these are indications of what our gifts might be. And there's all these different gifts that get used in various ways. Some of them are upfront gifts and very obvious. Some of them are behind the scenes. I think of what happens here at St. Thomas and the kinds of gifts that get used. Someone, discovered, someone gets to thinking about when people visit. We need to have a way to mark that and to celebrate their coming and to give them a way of remembering what happened here. We don't want to call too much attention to them. We don't want to embarrass them, but we do want to recognize that they've come. So let's think about something we can do for visitors. What about this yard with the grass that grows in the time of year when that happens? Who's going to take care of that? And some people say, me. We have services going on. We try to provide a means of bringing these services electronically during this season. Some people say, that's going to take equipment. Here, I'm going to write a check. And then those times when we do gather in person, we used to do that. It's, it's a memory that we have. We're pretty confident that happened. There will come a day when that happens again. And there are those who think, yeah, but when we get together, that's going to take some organizing. It, we're going to have to help people find where to sit. And if something happens, we need to be ready for that. And so that's gifts being used. When people hear about needs and issues in different lives and think, I need to pray about that. And my gift is to lift these people up in prayer, these situations, to be faithful and frequent in prayer. So we read these lists of gifts. We realize that everyone gets gifts. Why do the gifts come? 
Well, Paul offers a line of uh, explanation for that in verse 7 when he says that to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given, and then his line, for the common good. The exercise of these gifts is meant to bring about good in the body where they are on display and in the wider community from which these gifts ripple out. That's one explanation of the purpose of the gifts. We could find another back towards the end of our New Testament in the book of 1 Peter, where that apostle also speaks about spiritual gifts. This is chapter 4 of 1 Peter and verse 10, where he says, each of you, there's that each of you again, should use whatever gift you've received to serve others. It's faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. So that in all things, here's the purpose statement, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. The gifts are given for the common good, Paul says in 1 Corinthians. The gifts are given to help you serve, Peter says. The gifts are given so that in all things God may be praised. So we've got gifts that God gives. They're meant to go to everyone. There's different kinds of gifts and they're supposed to work in harmony for the common good to the praise of God. Now it's down to using these gifts. When we think back to Christmas or to a recent birthday or perhaps an anniversary, someone stops by and hands us a present that's wrapped and got a bow around it, or maybe it's in a bag with some fluffy paper that's coming out the top, and they put it there before us on the table or on a chair and say, here, this is for you, and you look at it and say, that's great, and then you go off to watch Netflix. No, that's not how we do this. Someone gives us a gift, and we want to open this gift and see what's inside, right? And so we do. We open up this gift. And very often, this gift is something for us to use in our lives. It might be a tool. Maybe it's a cordless drill or an immersion mixer. Or maybe it's an article of clothing. Or maybe it's an accessory for our car or something else that sits in the house, that hangs on the wall. It's something there that has function. That as we open this gift and we put it into play, that's what gifts are for. That's why gifts get given, to enrich a life and to accomplish some things. We look at the gifts that God gives in a very similar way. He doesn't just put something before us and we look at it and say, hmm, that's interesting, and then walk away. But rather, we receive this gift, we bring it into our lives, it becomes a part of us, and we use it for the common good, to serve others, to bring God glory. It's a matter for us to consider. Some of us are already pretty clear on what the gifts are that God has given us. Some of us are still asking that question. Some of us need to be asking the question. And so as we make this a matter of prayer and ask for the Lord's leading on this, we can listen to how God guides us and we can try. Well, maybe it's this. I think it might be this. And we get in and try that and maybe make a few adjustments and we realize, yeah, that's a pretty good fit or no, that was not a good idea. And we'll try something else so that we might take the gifts that God gives us and put them into play as part of the church that we are connected with, as members of the body to which God has called us, where we are taking our part, each of us taking our part to share the gifts that God's offered to us to serve with those gifts so that many flourish. This is God's design for the church to call people together, not just to be together, isolated by themselves, 
but to worship, to serve, to use what God gives, to carry out the work that God assigns. We become like in this, we become a group then that others can look at and where they see God present, where they see the effects of God in lives. A group where people flourish. A group where God gets praise. Let's pray together. And Lord, as we consider how much you give, we are truly amazed at your kindness and at your generosity and at the creativity as well. Thank you for the rich variety of gifts that you distribute throughout your church. And Lord, as we use the gifts you've given us as we get in touch a little better with what you're calling us to do in light of what you've given us to do it, would you help us to be faithful in our service and ready to offer back according to how you have gifted us. When we come to the Lord's table and consider the bread and the cup that is here, this becomes very clearly a, an indication of God's generosity. We talk about the gifts that God gives and there are these various abilities and inclinations that Paul and Peter describe, but the chief gift is on display here the gift of God's Son, and all that happens, all that's possible because of that wonderful gift. As we celebrate the communion this morning, may it be with hearts that are open to God and responsive to God and so grateful to God for calling us out of darkness into his wonderful light for making possible life everlasting. As we approach this table now, we're going to take a few quiet moments to pray together. We're going to use the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. And in that, we are making claims, we are asking help, we are seeking forgiveness. So let's move through this prayer slowly and thoughtfully as a way of readying our hearts to take the bread and cup from this table. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. May your kingdom come May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yours is the kingdom, and yours is the power, and yours is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
The scripture says that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and broke it. And there was a cup on the table. And he gave thanks for each. Loving God, praise be to your holy name. We thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you for this wonderful gift. And as we look to this table now and see this bread and this cup, we look through them to see him on the cross, his body broken, his blood poured out. And we give you thanks for the faithfulness that led to this for the effects of this death on our lives. Amen. Jesus passed the bread among his disciples. And he said, this is my body, broken for you as you eat it. Remember me. He passed the cup around as well pointing to it and saying, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. My blood, a sign of the covenant between me and you. As you drink from this cup, remember me. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we remember the Lord who, out of love, died and with power was raised from the grave. We thank you for sending the Spirit who guides us as we follow the risen Lord. Deepen our faith. Broaden our love for one another and help us live to your praise and glory. This we ask through Jesus, our Savior, our Lord. Amen.
Well, thanks this morning to Betsy and to Wendy and to Kathy for the music that you've brought. Thanks to Nathan and to Curtis for helping us with our technical issues today. And as we get ready to move into whatever lies ahead, let's remember that the Lord gives, the Lord provides. The Lord gives not just what makes life possible, as remarkable as that is, but God continues to give, gives on top of that, and gives what contributes to building a life on God's terms, a life that is good, a life that is good for all. God gives what is needed for that, entrusting resources to our care that we might use them for serving others, for encouraging, for teaching, for leading, for giving, for showing mercy, and on the list goes. So let's be looking for the gifts that God is giving, how God is entrusting us with gifts. Let's use those for God's glory, for the benefit of those who are part of this body, for the blessing of those who are in the community around us and the wider world. Amen.